Hey, what's up everybody? This is Casey Ferris with The Division Productions. Today I'm gonna to show you how we do time lapses. It's pretty simple, but a lot of people don't really know how to do it. So, we're outside, obviously, and I have a 5D Mark II right here. And all it's gonna do is basically just take a whole bunch of still pictures. And this is kind of set out of the way. Um, you can't see it from the street, which is good in our city because people like to steal stuff in our city. Not saying anything bad. Anyway, um, so I have it set on manual mode. I have the exposure and everything set, just like you take a picture. So the trick here is I have a nifty little doodad here that is a timer and it connects into the camera. You can buy them online for like, I think this one was like 12 bucks and uh, interfaces with uh, 5D, 7D and you can get them for just about any camera you have. Anyway, you can set a time and I set mine to interval and it's about 12 seconds and this will take a picture every 12 seconds. So timer goes down, click, timer goes down, click. So the idea is it takes a whole bunch of stills with this camera and it's cool because you can take up to like a 4K still and you can bring it into After Effects and make it into a sequence and it looks like a movie. And so this way you don't have to set up a video camera and shoot 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second for two hours and then you have this huge video file. There's no point in doing that. And so this is better quality and it's a smaller file size. So it's pretty awesome. So anyway, I just have this set up shooting towards our building there with a car in the foreground and then I made sure to frame it so you can see the clouds in the background because there's not much point in having a time lapse if nothing is happening over time and clouds are perfect. And I'm shooting these pictures in raw so that I can adjust the exposure a little bit more in post uh, because the sun will go behind the clouds, a whole bunch of stuff will happen to basically ruin my photos. I'm also making sure not to put this on live view mode. And so my back LCD screen is not on. It's just taking a picture without previewing it or doing anything crazy like that because I don't want it to drain the battery. Our studio is in Oregon and it's actually a really nice fall day. So since we are in Oregon and it could rain at any time, I have a plastic bag, so every 12 seconds, it should be taking a picture. So here I am in After Effects, and this is where I'm gonna put all of my images together and make them into a movie. So I'm gonna right click on my project window and import a file. I'm gonna to go to my time-lapse folder, and these are just the images right off the card. And I have a whole bunch of CR2 and JPEG images. And so I'm gonna start with my JPEGs, and I'm gonna make sure that my JPEG sequence box down here is checked, because if it's not, it's just gonna bring in this one image. And so I'm gonna select any of the images, hit JPEG sequence and hit open. And so now it brings it in as an image sequence. Now I can right click and go to interpret footage main. And this is gonna tell me what frame rate it thinks this image sequence is. And it's a good idea just to set this frame rate to whatever your project is gonna be. If it's a 2997 project, set it to 2997. For us, we shoot in 24P, so I'm gonna go with that and hit okay. So then I'm just gonna take this sequence and drag it down into my timeline. And now we have a big zoomed in version of the sequence. So I can hit S for scale and scale this down. So now I can scale and rotate and crop this image to look really good in this 16 by nine aspect ratio. This is a 1080p comp. And I'm gonna take my resolution down to quarter and hit zero on the number pad for RAM preview. Started this sequence a little bit early so we still have a a little bit of Tyler in the beginning, but I can just cut that out. And so that's the idea. I mean, that's how you make a time lapse. And the problem is, like I said, we're in Oregon and right about uh, here, it started pouring rain. And so I went out and grabbed the camera cause I don't want my camera ruined. But then like a resourceful person, I moved it under a covered awning and shot some more. And this is still at quarter resolution but I can get a good idea of the type of motion, the type of lighting that's happening in my sequence. And remember, this is just a JPEG sequence. And so I can do my color correction and everything on this, but where the real power of shooting stills comes in is you can shoot raw. I'm gonna import my raw files. I'm just gonna select any of these CR2s in this folder, hit camera raw sequence and hit open. And now it comes up with a camera raw window. And this is really great because I can adjust my exposure in post and I have a lot of dynamic range, 
which is really convenient when you're going to have changing lighting situations, um, things in the shadows that you want to show. But uh, let's go with something like that, and I'll hit OK. And I can drag this down into my timeline. So here's what's great. I can take I can take the attributes from my JPEG sequence and apply it to my raw sequence. So I can hit position, scale, and rotation. And I'm just holding down shift and hitting P, S, and R to bring those up. And I can select them all by holding shift and selecting all three of these. And I can hit command C and then select my raw sequence and hit command V. And that's gonna apply this rotation, scale, and position to my raw sequence. And so these should be the same now which is great because now I don't have to reframe it and I can just hide my JPEG sequence and there's my raw sequence. Now here's what's even cooler about a raw sequence. At the end of this time lapse, it's really bright, but right here, eh, maybe the exposure is about where I want. So what's cool is I can rename this and say bright. I can import my raw sequence again and I can adjust the settings and make it a little bit darker and I'll hit OK. And I can bring this raw sequence in, select my position scale and rotation again and apply it to my raw sequence. And now at the end of this sequence, I have a pretty well exposed image. So here's my brighter exposure and then here's my darker exposure. And so now what I can do is just simply blend these two together. I can bring up my opacity by hitting T on the keyboard and I can set a keyframe for when this exposure is a little bit too dark. And I can make it all the way transparent so that it will use my brighter exposure. And then I'm gonna come down here to the end and I'm gonna dial it back up. And so now this is gonna start with a good exposure and end with a good exposure. And so throughout this whole sequence, it should maintain a pretty good exposure because I'm kind of blending in between the two dark and bright exposures. Here's what the end result looks like. So when I'm happy with it, I can just set my in and out points and add it to my render queue and export it. A lot of the time I'll export a ProRes high quality um, if I'm on a PC, sometimes I'll export a DNX HD or a Cineform. And what's great about doing it this way is you have that video file and you don't have to render all the images together later or anything like that. It's just kind of its own combined nice looking movie. So that's how we do it here at The Division. If there's a different way, if I'm missing something, let me know. Uh, send me an email at casey at divisiontv.com and make sure to visit our website at reallifetelevision.com. Anyway, that about does it for me. My name's Casey Ferris with The Division Productions. I'll catch you next time.